recognition of his outstanding efforts to encourage reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and therefore reduce the impact of climate change on respiratory health, the European Lung Foundation is honoured to award Eva de Boer, Executive Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the 2009 ELF Award. Ladies and gentlemen, I regret not being able to join you in person because I am extremely honoured to receive the European Lung Foundation's prestigious award. I thank you greatly for it. It feels very special to have one's work acknowledged in this way. Indeed, climate change has been an issue very close to my heart for many years. Finally, after years of being confined as a somewhat obscure environmental issue, climate change and its many effects are getting the political and societal attention they urgently need. This is true also for the link between climate change and human health, which has been even clearer over the past two to three years. Climate variability and change cause death and disease through natural disasters such as heat waves, floods and droughts. Many diseases such as malaria are highly sensitive to changing temperatures and precipitation. Additionally, temperature increases due to rising levels of greenhouse gas concentrations lead to increased ozone formation. Increased ozone causes an increased burden of disease. The acute effects of ozone are widespread and range from airway injury and inflammation to acutely decreased lung function. Abnormally high temperatures in Europe in 2003 were associated with up to 27,000 deaths. New research from the University of Berkeley, California estimates that between 20% and 50% of these deaths can be attributed to increased levels of ozone and associated particulate levels. Increased ozone and temperatures interact to increase mortality. Without significantly increased action on climate change, its effects will worsen, impacting every sphere of human existence to the detriment of human well-being and survival. The fourth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, published in 2007, jolted the world with its confirmation of human-induced climate change, its projections of temperature rise, and associated serious impacts. But it also clarified that there is still a window of opportunity for concerted climate change action that will prevent the most catastrophic impacts. In response to this, countries in the intergovernmental climate change negotiations recognize that climate change action needs to be stepped up. As a result, a two-year negotiating process was launched at the end of 2007 on how to step up the international response to climate change, including beyond the first commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol, which ends in 2012. The two-year negotiating process is set to culminate in an agreed outcome at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Copenhagen in December of this year. For Copenhagen to be a success, it is absolutely essential that the agreed outcome provides workable, realistic provisions on the following key issues. First, ambitious greenhouse gas emission reduction objectives for industrialized countries which have agreed to take the lead in emission reductions. Second, nationally appropriate actions in developing countries that slow or limit the growth of their emissions. Third, sufficient and sustained support for such action by developing countries and support for their efforts to adapt to climate change. And fourth, equitable provisions to manage this support. These critical issues are interlinked within the climate change negotiations. They cannot be solved in isolation. But resolving them will put the world on a safer course and ultimately a successful Copenhagen will mean fewer effects on people's health in the future. I extend my gratitude for the award to you once again and I also hope to count on your continued support for an ambitious outcome at Copenhagen. I thank you. <laughs>